Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to address a question that was asked on the CAD Tutor forum a while back, which was how to render a model in AutoCAD with the edges displayed, basically like a line drawing. Now this question was asked back in 2022 and my reply was to export to Blender and do the rendering there. And I provided a very quick example of how to do it but I didn't really get into much detail. If you're interested in reading through that thread, there's a link in the description. But anyway, uh, the thread was recently brought back to life by someone offering advice that simply doesn't work in AutoCAD. So I decided to make a video showing how I would do it in Blender. Now, here's a model that I made in AutoCAD for one of my other videos, but I don't want to get into a bunch of AutoCAD stuff because that's not really what this video is about. And I've already covered exporting in another video. So I'll link to that one in the description below so you can check it out. But to keep this video short and on point, I'm just going to select this model, type export, choose the STL format, and hit save. Okay, here in Blender, I'll delete the default cube and light, and I'll go to File, Import, STL, and then I will browse to the location of my STL file. I'll select it, and I need to scale it down because my units in AutoCAD were inches, and my units here in Blender are meters. So I'm going to give it a scale factor of 0 0.0254, and then I'll hit Import. And sometimes when I import STL files, I'll get these shading errors, but uh, it's pretty easy to fix. Just select your model, right click, and then you want to shade smooth by angle. And that takes care of all those errors. Now for lighting, I could set up a whole studio lighting rig, but to keep it simple, I'm just going to use an HDRI image. So I'll go to world properties. I'll click on this little yellow dot next to color and I'll choose environment texture. Then I'll click on the folder and I'll browse to the location of my HDRIs and pick the one that I want. I'll use this one. And now I'll switch the viewport display to rendered. And I'll go to render properties and change to cycles. And I want the device to be GPU compute so that my graphics card will handle the rendering and not my CPU. I have a couple videos that go into detail about HDRI lighting and rendering, so I'll link to those below if you want to check them out. Now this background is distracting. So over here in the render properties, I'll scroll down to film and check transparent, and that will make the HDRI background image disappear but the lighting is still working. Next, I'm going to move my camera and position it roughly where I think I'm gonna want it. Then I'll hit zero on the number pad to jump into camera view. And I'll open up the side menu and switch to view and make sure camera to view is selected. And that will allow me to zoom and pan around within the camera view to get the model positioned roughly where I think I'm gonna want it for the rendering. Now if I select the camera and come over here to the camera or the, the object data properties for the camera, I can change the focal length to something else if I want it to be 35 millimeter or 20 millimeter or whatever. I'm going to leave it at 50 millimeter though for this rendering. 
Now I'll hit uh, I'll hit zero on the number pad again to jump back out of camera view, and then Shift A, and I want to add a plane, and I'm going to scale it up and move it over so that it's underneath the model, so that I have something for the model to sit on. And now I'm going to hit zero on the number pad again to jump back in. Because I want to make sure this plane is going to cover the entire area within camera view. Something like that. And now with the plane selected, I'll come over to the material properties. I'll add a new material. And I'll call it ground. And I'm going to set the color to something darker. Maybe, maybe something like that. Next, I need to select the camera and the plane up here. And I need to drag it out of this collection. So I'm going to drag up. And I'll drop it onto the scene collection to get it out of there. The only thing inside this collection needs to be your model or models, if you have more than one, that you want to have the line work applied to. Everything else has to be out of this collection. Now, if I hit the home key on my keyboard, the camera view will fill the full screen. And then I'm going to close this side menu by hitting N. And I think I want to make this ground plane a little bit darker, maybe like that. So now that everything's set up, we can do the line work. So I'm going to hit zero on the number pad to jump out of camera view. And I'll hit shift A, go to grease pencil, and I'm going to select scene line art. And right away, you can see that this line art item has been added to the collection. And we now have line work applied to the model. And if you pan around, it looks like something's wrong. Like the line work doesn't cover the whole model. If you look at it over here and over here, you've got it overlapping. But it's actually fine. The line work is generated only within the camera view. If I select the camera and I move it, you can see the line work is moving on the model. So I'll hit Control Z to put the camera back. And I'll zoom back in here because the line work is a little heavy. So with the line art selected, I'll go to the modifier section and you can see there's a line art modifier that's been applied to the model. And I can adjust the line thickness here. So I'm going to set it to 8 because I think that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to go to the output properties and I need to change my resolution. And I'm going to set this one 38, 40, and this one. 2160, which basically it, it doubles what, what was here by default, and it will end up giving me a much sharper render. Then I'm going to go to the render properties and come down to light paths. And I want to turn off reflective and refractive because I, I don't need those, and those will just increase uh, the render time. And now I'll hit zero on the number pad to jump back into camera view to see how we're looking. And then I'll hit F12 to render. And it'll take a minute or so, and it won't look like the line art is working, but once the render finishes, you'll see the result.
And there it is. So now I'll close this because I, I want to add some color to the model. So I'm going to select it and then I'll switch to the shading tab. And I'm going to add a new material. And this will allow me to adjust the base color and give it whatever color I want. I think I'll make it a blue, something like that. And I'm going to do one more thing because I, I don't like where the light is coming from. So I'm going to switch from object to world. And now this is, this is my HDRI. So with it selected, I'm going to hit control T to add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. Now you need to have the node wrangler enabled in order to do that. So just come up to edit preferences, go to add-ons, type in node, and then make sure you have the node wrangler enabled. So now in the mapping node, I can adjust the rotation of the HDRI. So if I rotate around maybe 180 degrees, or maybe 150 degrees, that's probably fine. Now I'm going to switch back to object because I want to adjust the roughness a little bit here. Just make it a little more shiny. Something like that. So now I'll hit F12 again and wait for it to finish. And there you go. And to save it, come up to Image, Save As. And you can change your file format if you don't want PNG, but I'm going to leave it as is. And hit Save Image. And here's the final render. Zoom right in. It's nice and crisp and clean. Looks pretty good. Okay, that's going to do it for this one. Hopefully you found it helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post them below. And as always, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.